Welcome back everybody. It's time to do yet another reaction to probably my favorite channel that I've found so far doing this, uh, doing this channel, uh, Geography Now. And today we're doing Liechtenstein. I hope I said that right. I hope I said that right. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. It's a, it's a random country, but I just thought, you know, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. Um, I know it's, it's like right smack in the middle of Europe. So let's just get started. Let's just see what they've got to say. Guys, it's here. Some of you have been waiting for this episode for years. Sure, everybody I'm knows about China, Brazil, Germany, and Australia, but how many of you know anything about Little Liechtenstein? According to him, I said right. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Okay, I actually had the incredible honor to not only go to this country with my mom last year, and we also got passport stamps, which by the way, Swiss geography peeps Herman and Fabian, thank you for driving and hosting us. But I also had the incredible honor of meeting one of the incredibly rare and few native-born Liechtensteiner geography peeps, Pascal. Dude, a real Liechtensteiner watches geography now. That's amazing. That's awesome. Meeting an actual native of Liechtenstein is like finding a unicorn in a haystack in the Saharan desert, and the desert is made of haystacks. Sorry, I'm just kind of gushing <laughs> because come on. We're doing Little Liechtenstein today. Let's begin. Now, if you don't know anything about Liechtenstein, the first nope. thing you might need to know is that it is incredibly small, like the sixth smallest country in the world. And it's also rather difficult to get into wow. in contrast to other European countries. First of all, classified as a microstate, the nation of Liechtenstein is located between Austria and Switzerland, taking up only 162 square kilometers, being only 25 kilometers long and 94 wow. kilometers wide. It is also one of the only two doubly landlocked nations in the world, meaning that it's landlocked within other landlocked nations, the other one being Uzbekistan. The country is divided into 11 different municipalities, with their own exclaves of the capital Vaduz that it's has only, only about 5,200 people located in the center of the country. Vaduz wow. is actually the second largest town in the country, the first being Shan with about 500 more people. The country has no airports or seaports, but they do have a heliport at Baltzers, but that's just like for tourist rides into the mountains. And they do have four train stations operated by an Austrian federal railway system. And the stations are only serviced on weekday peak hours. So getting in, you're much better off either taking a bus or car. To drive in, you can take various bridge crossings from Switzerland or you can come in from Feldkirk, Austria. There isn't any border. So it sounds like you gotta, you know, fly into like Austria or somebody and then and just drive over. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. Control or passport checks. It's really easy. However, if you do want a passport stamp, you can get one at the tourism slash post office in Baduz for about three euros. Worth it! The main number 28 road pretty much crosses the entire country north to south as almost the entire country lives on the west side due to the high mountainous border to the east. The funny thing is, after World War II, Liechtenstein actually had a little land dispute with what is now Czechia over the castles and forests and agricultural land plots that were hereditary lands that belonged to the former monarchs. These Beautiful. lands altogether made up a land area over over 10 times the size of Liechtenstein. However, when they brought it up, Czechia was like, hmm, so you want your old lands back, eh? Well, how about I give you the castles, but not the surrounding land areas? To which Liechtenstein was like, <laughs> Finally, in 2009, they decided to drop the case and just let it go, but I mean, whatever. They have like eight other palaces in Austria and one in Italy. Otherwise, some places of interest might include the Prince's Castle in Baduz, Malbun, which has a ski resort, the Main Square, the National Museum, the Postage Stamp Museum, the Schatzkammer Treasure Chamber, the Kunstmuseum, the Landtag, or Parliament Building, and Balter's Gothic Castle. All right, oh, now let's it. take a look at those pristine out. So beautiful, man. So beautiful. Oops, shall we? <laughs> For such a small country, Liechtenstein actually has a lot going on in terms of landscape. For one, the country is located on the Upper Rhine Valley in the European Alps, along the longest river, the Rhine, that borders with Switzerland. The entire eastern side of Liechtenstein is mountainous, with the highest peak, Grauschwitz, located on the southern border with Switzerland as well. Just up north, the largest and pretty much only real lake in the country, Grand Prix Zilla, can be found, although it should be classified as a pond, but eh. When it comes yeah. to resources, Liechtenstein isn't exactly top dog. I mean, there's a few cultivated fields in the south, but overall, not too many things to extract. Nonetheless, they do actually have some industries like textiles, pharmaceuticals, power tools like the company Hilti. Other companies are in the country like Nutrik, Tyson Krupp, Hoval, Hilkona. And also, Liechtenstein is the world's... I'm just gonna go off of how he's saying things, the name of these, you know, companies and, and lakes or the lake I guess and stuff I'm assuming they speak German there that's going to be the main language largest provider of false teeth thanks to the company Evo Clar Vivident accounting for 20% of sales worldwide producing 60 million sets a year it has something to do with the close relationship with Bollywood 
Yeah, whatever, just look it up. It's funny though, because there's actually more registered companies and jobs in Liechtenstein than there are people, which is why over half the workforce has to travel into Liechtenstein from Switzerland or Austria. This means the country has the most exports per capita at around $122,000 per person. It wasn't always like this though. Before the 17th century, Liechtenstein was known for being the witch country with boring farmers. It wasn't until the beginning of the 20th century that Liechtenstein decided to change up fiscal policies and become a huge tax haven, especially for billionaires. But it's not like one of those blacklist havens it's a good one okay they, they do things right hey we're just hustling okay don't act like you don't too out of all the seven ish trillion sheltered dollars worth in tax havens worldwide Liechtenstein manages about 180 billion in addition they host nearly 74,000 letterbox companies which don't even really do anything but they still get paid for so that means the system kind of keeps Liechtensteiners abundantly employed with about five million dollars and two companies to look after per citizen yeah kids if you really want to get rich don't seek after fame study business and finance with minors and accounting trust me I'm a YouTuber. I know exactly what not to do. Oh yeah, the national animal is the kestrel. They even have a falconry center in Melbourne. And some of the top notable dishes of Liechtenstein might include Kesselnöpfle, which is like a variation of Kesselspätzle, Riebel, Zurkis, Liechtenstein wine, and those crown-shaped chocolate things called... Oh jeez, how do you pronounce this? Fürstenhütlen. All right, now let's move on to the ones that make those dishes the people of this country. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was this thing called the Holy Roman Empire. It was basically made up of like 1,800 territories that eventually meshed and melded into what is now parts of like 12 different countries in Europe. Liechtenstein is basically the last surviving territory of the Holy Roman Empire that never really coalesced into any other state. Partially because nobody really cared about it and it was too small to bother with. But who's laughing now? <laughs> First of all, the country has nearly 38,000 people and is almost always ranked in the top three highest GDP per capita. The city that I'm 10 miles from has that many people in it. That's insane. That is insane that a whole country is only that big. But the states in the world at nearly 180K per capita. The country is only about a third native Liechtensteiner, whereas the remaining populace is made up of foreigners, mostly Germans, Austrians, Swiss, and Italians. They use a Swiss franc as their currency. They use a type J plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Which, by the way, I hate the J plug outlet because half the time the sockets are sunk into these weird hexagon-shaped divots. Half the time I couldn't even fit my type C adapter plug when I was in Switzerland. Why? Why do you guys do that? That's like borderline sadistic Switzerland and Liechtenstein. That and your prices for everything. Otherwise, I love everything else about you guys. Now, here's the thing. Liechtenstein is one of four countries in Europe that speaks German. However, they speak with their own distinct dialect, very similar to the Swiss and Austrians. Obviously, it's a little different from Hochdeutsch, which is spoken up north in Germany. From what I was told, Liechtensteiners are known for saying hoi for hello and ciao for bye. Instead of ku for cow, they say wuschla. Instead of hügel for hill, they say wöhe. This is what you guys told me, so yeah. Also, I was told that this is how you can tell all the Germanic speaking countries apart. Let's say that you gained weight. This is how a friend from each country would respond. Hmm. So how are you doing? Ah, I see you're enjoying your schnitzels, eh? You got fat. Now, like the Swiss, Liechtenstein has always kind of kept to themselves and stayed out of affairs. There's a legend that says that when they fought in the Austro-Prussian War, they came back with negative casualties, as in the army of 80 men came back with a friend. After that, the military was disbanded, and today, all military affairs are handled by the Swiss army, even though they accidentally fired a shell and burned off a patch of their forest in the 80s and accidentally invaded in 2007, and, but, you know, they laughed over it with glasses of wine. Now, Liechtenstein is generally seen as being more conservative than other countries and more religious Religious, mostly adhering to Catholicism with very strict stances on social issues like gay marriage, abortion, and immigration. In fact, less than 60 resident permits are issued every year for EEA citizens that work in Liechtenstein, half by lottery and half by government. Oh yeah, and the country is a monarchy, a principality to be exact. Essentially, the von Liechtenstein family, where the country gets its name from, are descended from Austrian noblemen related to the Habsburgs, and even though they get little publicity, they are literally the richest royals in Europe, with a net worth of over $7.5 billion. The current prince, Hans Adam II, being the owner of LGT Bank alone, having a personal fortune of about $4 billion. Yeah, by wow. contrast, Queen Elizabeth has only about $500 million. The prince has four children and 15 That's grandchildren. That's insane. Alois being the next in line to the throne. Oh, and his brother Maximilian married Angela Gisela Brown from Panama, who was the first person of known African ancestry to have married into a reigning European dynasty. The royal family is actually quite popular and loved by the people. They're very down to earth and they eat at cafes downtown in Vaduz regularly, talking to the everyday. That's how it should be. I don't understand why we like popularize and make these politicians and royal families and stuff such celebrities. They're people. They put their pants on the same as we do. That's what it should be. 
citizens. Once a year, they even hold a party, which everyone is allowed to come to the castle and share a beer. There is a bit of controversy, though, because today, they are the only monarchy in Europe in which the monarch has influence on every level of government. The prince can veto anything. In 2012, they held a vote which kind of went like this. We want to take away your powers of exercising the option to veto bills. Hmm, I mean, if you really don't want me around, I can totally just leave and let you guys handle everything. Really? Yeah, I'll just take my $7.6 billion corporate interest and revenue deals outside of the state, but, you know, y you can sell postcards to tourists. Wait, come back! And over three quarters of the population voted to let him remain with his original duties. Speaking of monarchy, history. We don't have a lot of time to go too far into it, but the way I can summarize it. Two small Holy Roman Empire earldoms of Badutz and Schellenberg. 1969, this guy comes along. 1712, he purchases both Badutz and Schellenberg, hence joining the two together, making the country complete. The Napoleon years, but the prince is like a respected military leader, so they remain independent. 19th century, joins German Confederation, although Austria gets left out, which geographically separates Liechtenstein from Germany. World War One breaks ties with Austria-Hungary. 1938, Prince moves back in from Vienna. World War II, after Austria is annexed, they are literally on the Nazi border, but Hitler was like, eh, not worth it, and left them alone. They stay neutral and independent. Post-World War II, very lucky. boom, all the banks, fiduciaries, and engineers come in. Czechia dispute. 1984, women are allowed to vote. The last European country to do so. 1995, they join the EEA. And here we are today. Oh, and Liechtenstein has like one of the lowest crime rates in the world. Prisons are often empty, and anyone with a sentence over two years is actually sent to Austria. Austria. It's been said that people typically don't even lock their front doors. With such a small population, everyone kind of knows everyone and has a close tie. Nonetheless, they still reach out and make friends abroad. Which brings us to... Now, it doesn't really matter how small your country is, if you're able to handle your country's overall economic output with a content populace, holding onto sovereignty is a breeze, and so is making friends. Today, they have six embassy missions abroad in Austria, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, and the Vatican, and the United States. However, Switzerland huh. is authorized to represent Liechtenstein in other diplomatic situations unless they decide to send their own delegates. Liechtenstein is interesting because they don't host any embassies in their territory, but rather 32 honorary consuls, surprisingly three of which are the African states of Chad, Senegal, and the Central African. African Republic, whom have reached out and made close ties for decades. They are not part of the European Union, but rather part of the Schengen area, which means they have open borders and visa policies with the EU. And also as a member of the EEA, they have free movement of goods and persons and services as well. But yeah, not part of the EU. Austria and Germany have always been close friends, especially the Southern Bavarian and baden württemberg states of Germany. These two make up some of the largest business partners and Makes foreign sense. population They're living in Liechtenstein, which is barely even much of a distinction since they are all Germanic brothers to begin with. In early years, most of the modern Monarchs actually chose to live in Austria rather than their own country until 1938 when Franz Josef was like, we're moving back in, folks. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Liechtensteiners might say the Swiss. They share everything. A customs union, a monetary union, military coverage, diplomatic delegates. They even speak relatively the same dialect and have similar mannerisms and culture cues. It's Makes often sense. said that Switzerland sees Liechtenstein as its little yet surprisingly richer brother. I mean, they literally were totally cool with it when they got accidentally attacked. What more do you need to know? In conclusion, Liechtenstein is kind of like a high capacity storage microchip. Small, yet absolutely flooding with abundance, neatly tucked away in a small space hidden away from the public eye. Stay tuned, the second creepy Baltic twin, Lithuania, is coming up next. Well, that was interesting. I, I wasn't expecting it to be such a powerhouse, I guess is a word. I mean, it, it's not like they're, you know, they're not the US or any of the countries around them. Apparently better than Switzerland, though, when it comes to economic powerhouses. But for as small as it is, it's it's a beast little country. It's beautiful. That was interesting. I'm, a, I'm glad I went with that one today. That was that was a very interesting video. So, hey, uh, let me know what you guys think of Liechtenstein down in the comment section down below. Um, thank you all for being here. I appreciate everybody joining me on the video. Um, like the video if you haven't already. Shout out to all your friends. Um, subscribe to the channel if you could. I mean, it helps me. It's free for you, and you can undo it at any time. Um, out of that though, thank you all so much for being here today and uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day. Thanks guys.